Good morning on this Wednesday, June 27th. This is a 10 a.m. Mountain Time update on the developing Waldo Canyon fire. As of the original incident overview posted early this morning, the size of the fire was 6,200 acres, but as we can see, the latest update posted within the past hour has indicated that the fire has almost tripled in size. It is now in excess of 15,000 acres. There is only 5% containment, and the estimated containment date is not until Monday, July 16th. The official personnel estimate listed here is at 764, although the latest news reports indicate that that has swelled to an excess of 1,000 with more arriving on the scene. The following is the latest Waldo Canyon mandatory evacuation areas. However, this is time sensitive, so if you are anywhere near these listed locations, you may want to check up on the latest news sources for more up-to-date information. The following map is the most recent one showing the location of the Waldo Canyon fire. And I should first reiterate that the main fire is located to the northwest of downtown Colorado Springs, but many areas within this entire region are already being impacted not only by the fire, but also the very heavy smoke. And it is very hard to exit off of I-25 if you are trying to head west at this time. Now as we zoom in, you can see more so some of the specific regions of the city that have already been affected the most by the fire and it sounds as though over 100 homes have been burned to the ground or at least been heavily damaged by the fires over the past 24 hours although the one saving grace is that as of right now the fire has yet to make it past Centennial Boulevard and hopefully that remains to be the case. So far thankfully there have been no significant injuries or deaths as a result of this fire although at least 20 people have been treated at local hospitals for respiratory problems and this is a direct result of the heavy smoke that is around Colorado Springs and if we begin to take a more in-depth look at some of the meteorological parameters we can see why the smoke plume is occasionally worse than other times this is what we call a skew T chart and all this does is allow us to observe the temperature beginning near the surface and then going up with height and as of 6 a.m. local time this morning, we can see right off the bat that the surface temperature was slightly cooler than the temperatures aloft. And as long as we have warmer temperatures right above the surface, we can call that an inversion. And as long as an inversion is in place, it is going to be difficult for that smoke plume to continue to rise higher up in the atmosphere. And as a result, we have to deal with more of it near the ground level. The National Weather Service office based out of Pueblo, Colorado is keeping a very close watch on that temperature inversion and that is allowing them to make experimental forecasts with regards to the smoke dispersal and as we go into the mid to late afternoon hours as we get some more radiational heating and the ground temperature begins to rise that inversion will soon dissipate so they are expecting very good smoke dispersal but as we go into the late overnight into early morning hours of tomorrow it will become somewhat poor once again. The latest surface observations out of Colorado show that we are still dealing with extremely warm temperatures today and we are already approaching 89 degrees in Colorado Springs so temperatures will well exceed 90 degrees this afternoon and those dew points are still in the low to mid 30s so conditions are still very dry and favorable for extreme fire conditions. The current surface winds are only 5 to 10 miles per hour so they are not a major issue. However, we will have to closely monitor the thunderstorm activity later this afternoon. It would be very good if we could get some rain near the fire location. However, if the storms remain only nearby and produce outflow like we saw yesterday, then they could allow the fire to expand in range very quickly. Also, the high altitude Haines Index ranges from 5 to 6 across central and southeast Colorado, which of course also supports extreme fire danger. The 10 a.m. local time radar shows that we are dealing with some isolated shower activity, but it is primarily centered to the north near Cheyenne, Wyoming. Although once we get into the mid to late afternoon hours, we do think that the coverage will begin to expand toward the south into Denver and Colorado Springs. But with all that being said, it's only going to be 20 to 30 percent in coverage, and it will be very important to see exactly where the shower activity does indeed develop. This morning's visible satellite imagery shows the smoke plume getting picked up by the mid to upper level westerly winds and then streaking across Kansas and Nebraska. And if we switch over to the water vapor, we see increasing mid to upper level moisture streaming across the Rockies, and that is why the rain chances are slightly higher this afternoon.
The following is a simulated radar from one of our forecast models and as you can see as we go later on into this afternoon and evening we should see increasing coverage of shower activity and hopefully this will help the firefighting missions. So that's all we have for now on this developing fire weather situation and please for all interest in the evacuation area please adhere to the latest evacuation information and if you have no places to go they do have Red Cross shelters set up across Colorado so there is no reason to not evacuate if you are called upon to do so. So that is all the information that we have available here at 28storms.com. Keep it tuned to our Facebook and Twitter accounts for more up-to-date information on this developing story.